Welcome back to New Rockstars, I'm Eric Voss, and Spider-Man Across the Spider-Verse ended with a gut punch of a cliffhanger, a true, well, what the hell now, moment, setting up the next installment, Beyond the Spider-Verse, currently slated to release March 29th, 2024. There's a lot to explain with this movie's take on the Spider-Verse, or I should say arachno-humanoid polymultiverse. No post-credit scenes, so in this video, we're just gonna discuss where this movie leaves us and what's coming next. Spoilers ahead! Also, I broke down new details of 2018's Into the Spider-Verse over on the Deep Dive channel, where on Friday I'm hosting a live breakdown of Across the Spider-Verse at noon Eastern. Support me with one of these Miles Morales Multiverse Dive shirts at nerdriot.shop. It's one of my favorite new shirt designs. I'm gonna be wearing this all the time. And thank you to Boxsuit for sponsoring this video. More on their tasty offerings later. So in 2023's Spider-Man Across the Spider-Verse, Miles Morales learns that the Spider Society of Miguel O'Hara has excluded Miles because he is an anomaly. That his spider, Alchemex Spider number 42, came from another universe, Earth-42, and was never supposed to bite him. According to Miguel, this collider event caused Miles Universe's Peter Parker to die, it left Earth-42 without a Spider-Man, and it created the multiverse-consuming villain, The Spot, in Miles' universe, Jonathan Owen, revealed in this movie to be the alchemic scientist in the 2018 movie that Miles threw a bagel at, producing that hilarious action word of bagel. So Miguel explains the nature of the Spider-Verse, aka the web of life and destiny, or in his words, Spider-Verse. It's called the arachno-humanoid polymultiverse. You always lose me with that. This web, he says, is made up of interlocking nodes of canon events, critical rites of passage for all spider people, which include deaths of loved ones and sacrificial deaths of police captains, which for Gwen Stacy would be her father, George Stacy, and for Miles would be his father, Lieutenant Jeff Morales, soon to be Captain Jeff Morales. And Miles, as an anomaly, disrupts these canon events just by his nature, which we saw in Mumbatton, when Miles saves Pavatir Prabhakar's girlfriend's father, Captain Singh, from the fallout of the crumbling Alchemex building in that universe. So Miguel and his society trap villainous anomalies from the multiverse in these amber colored shells, including a live action cameo by Donald Glover as an alternate universe Aaron Davis Prowler. Remember, Glover played Aaron Davis in 2017 Spider-Man Homecoming in the MCU. Now he wasn't necessarily Prowler yet at that time, and he also cameoed in 2018's Into the Spider-Verse on Aaron Davis's TV from an episode of NBC's Community when, as the character Troy, he wore Spider-Man PJs. Donald Glover, aka Childish Cambino, voiced Miles Morales in the Ultimate Spider-Man animated series. So Miguel tries to encase Miles for just a few days to let Miles' father Jeff die back on Earth 1610 because we know the spot is targeting him. But Miles is able to use his electricity powers to explode out of the energy field and he flees all the spider people in the HQ. He lures everyone on a chase on the high-speed rail train of Nueva York. Then he fries Miguel's techno-organic suit and leaps back down to the lab where he uses a machine to cocoon him in a shell that will send him back to his home reality based on the DNA of the spider that bit him so that he can save his father. Miguel does the same to Gwen Stacy sending her back to Earth-65 with no multiverse gadget, so she's not able to help Miles. Bringing us to the final act, where things get really eerie. Miles dashes home through the rain. He passes reflections of Spider-Ham, Penny Parker, and Spider-Man Noir, his friends from the 2018 film. But this red and green tinted world just looks a little off compared to the Brooklyn he left behind. Now, when you're watching your favorite movies and shows, they've got your eyes and ears covered, but what about your other senses? For that, you need a snack. And if you want snacks that are as immersive and transformative as a big blockbuster film, you want Baksu. Baksu is a premium Japanese snack box that works with family businesses all over Japan to deliver a new theme of authentic Japanese snacks every month. Ooh. Beyond the tasty treats, each box who comes with a booklet that teaches you all about the theme and where the snacks come from. This month's theme is Midori Summer, and I'm learning the word Kasa which is Umbrella. Now your first box is gonna be Seasons of Japan. And after that, you receive a new theme every month like this one, Midori Summer. It's packed with a bunch of green snacks to celebrate the start of the lush rainy season in Japan. Now let's see, what to eat. I am going to try this mini awa akoshi snack. It's a crunchy, airy, puffed rice snack. Oh, mmm. Oh, I like it, it's got ginger, it's got sesame. This is awesome. Another great thing about Baksu is that when you fall in love with the snack, just like I did, you can stock up on your favorites through Baksu Boutique. Both I and the new Rockstar's office have been receiving these boxes for ages. We love them. They also make a stellar gift for the food or travel lover in your life. So if you wanna try Baksu and support the channel, click the link in the description and use code ROCKSTARS to get $15 off your order. Meanwhile, Miguel leads a search party of Jessica Drew and Ben Riley to Earth 1610 to stop Miles and to let Jeff die and defeat the spot. Gwen Stacy, meanwhile, back in Earth 65, 
makes peace with her dad, George, who decided to resign from the police force and therefore not be a captain. And he gives her a different gadget designed by Hobie Brown that Gwen's able to use to go to 1610 to help Miles. So Miles has gone home, but a little detail in this bedroom, boxing gloves now hanging from the doorknob. This is a room of a Miles who's still working the bag. So Miles tells his mother Rio that he's Spider-Man and we think Gwen is listening outside, but Rio doesn't know who Spider-Man is. And for a second, we think it's a joke that Rio might just not be caught up on current events, but no, 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 no. Like the classic Silence of the Lambs fake out where Clary Starling is going to one home while the FBI is raiding a different home. Gwen is actually outside a different location in a different universe. Miles' empty bedroom in 1610. Meanwhile, Miles realizes he is not in his home universe. That machine back in Nueva York was based on the DNA of the spider that bit him, which was not from 1610. It was from Earth 42, a universe with no Spider-Man. In this universe, Uncle Aaron is still alive. He says, Hey, calling back his shoulder move advice from the first movie, and he asks Miles why he took his braids out. So Aaron, a criminal, has been giving Rio to help her make ends meet, and it's taken Miles under his wing. They go to the roof, and they see the memorial mural is not of Aaron, but of Miles' father, Jeff Morales. Jeff is dead in this universe. Miles gets knocked out, and he wakes up tied to Aaron's punching bag in his apartment, the one that Miles and Aaron worked out with in the 2018 film, and the one that Miles tied Peter B. Parker to. Aaron now reveals that he is not the Prowler, someone else is, and a younger Prowler steps forward and unmatched asks himself, it's the face of Miles. His hair is braided. The credits identify this as Miles G. Morales. He's voiced by Gerald Jerome. Our Miles shocked face is lit by red on one side, blue on the other, but in the middle, those two colors mixed, Prowler purple. A color that, not to get too nerdy about this, does not exist in the normal spectrum of light, because in the spectrum of all visible light by the human eye, blue is on one side, red is at the other end. Our rods and cones just kind of mix them together in our heads. That's why purple is often associated with villains in these movies, because it's just not from this world. So our Miles says, if I don't get home, our dad is going to die. But Prowler corrects, your dad. Our Miles begs, please, you have to let me go. But Prowler says, why would I do that? and he clenches his armored fist and presses the punching bag right beside Miles' face. So the film ends with the spot, closing in on Miles' father, Jeff, back in 1610, but we hear this wild drum solo, taking us back to the opening image of the movie, Gwen Stacy's drumming with her band, The Mary Janes. Remember, this movie began with Gwen Stacy leaving her band, and now she says she found a new band that combined forces of herself, Gwen Stacy, Peter B. Parker, Hobie Brown, Spider-Man Noir, Penny Parker, and Spider-Ham on course to rescue and avenge Miles. End of movie, no post credit scene. See you next year for Beyond the Spider-Verse. But how do any of them untangle this mess? Well, you could say Miles' dad might just be able to go the George Stacy route and resign from the PDNY, but I don't know. That seems like a technicality and not really be able to undo the anomaly of Miles' existence as a Spider-Man. Of course, it's also possible that Miguel's interpretation of the rules of the web and life and destiny are not sacrosanct, and that rather than Miles being the exception, the anomaly, the mistake, the Spider-Verse might be stronger if more Spider-People were bitten by spiders from other dimensions, because it would make them responsible not just for their homes, but other neighboring universes. One thing we've learned about these movies is that sometimes folks just have to live in multiple worlds at once. And so maybe by defeating Prowler Miles in the next movie, the solution could be to save him by getting him bitten by a radioactive spider from another universe. And since this movie established Spider-Verse canon events as Andrew Garfield, Peter Parker mourning the death of Captain Stacy from the 2012 Amazing Spider-Man film and Tobey Maguire, Peter Parker greeting Cliff Roberts and Uncle Ben's death in that movie, two universes we know are linked to the MCU by Spider-Man No Way Home. And the spot in this movie visited Ms. Chen from Venom, a universe this movie labels Earth 688, and we also of course got a live action MCU actor, Donald Glover, in an animated world. It's just inevitable that Beyond the Spider-Verse is going to leave us with a live action Miles Morales who can exist in the MCU. Now my Easter egg breakdown of this film is coming this weekend on the main New Rockstars channel with more videos and explanations to come beyond that. Subscribe to the deep dive though for deeper analyses including my live breakdown of this movie Friday noon Eastern and grab a Miles Multiverse Dive shirt at nerdriot.shop. Follow me on Instagram and Twitter at EA Boss. Follow New Rockstars and subscribe to New Rockstars for more analysis of everything you love. Thanks for watching. Bye.